Oh, hey there! <laughs> I'm sorry about that, how are you doing? Today I will not show you how to play a song, I will talk a bit about chords and yeah, I will really talk about uh, what chords are, especially indie guitar chords, how they're made, how you can use them, how to play them as well and really the basic fundamental knowledge of chords to know, to dig deeper into creating indie music and understanding indie music. But yeah, before we get into that, I recommend you to first watch my video called Learning to play indie guitar, the scales, because you do need some knowledge, some basic knowledge of scales to understand everything about chords. So definitely check that out first, especially the beginning of that video is very important to know. But if you already know a bit or two about scales, you might understand everything in this video as well. The idea is that a, a scale, when you want to play a scale, a scale picks out a few notes from all the notes available to us. A chord picks out a few notes from a certain scale that is available to us. Just like that. A C chord picks out a few notes from the C scale. A G chord picks, picks, <laughs> a G chord picks out a few notes from the G scale. As easy as that. And while picking out these chords, we use some sort of numbering system usually. That also explains those weird major 7s and minor 7s after chord names. So when we want to know which notes a chord contains, we always look at it from the major scale. So also when you want to know which notes the G minor exist of, you look at it from the G major scale, but I'll get more into that later. Anyways, as again, as I said, a chord picks out a few notes from the particular scale. So a let's pick the C major scale for example. Uh, when you want to know how to play a C major chord, you always pick out the first, the third and the fifth note of the scale. Also with the G major, uh, first 1, 3, 5, it's with every chord the same, so the first note of the scale, the third note of the scale, and the fifth note of the scale. So with the C scale, as you can see, this is the C scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. The first note is the C, third note is the E, and the fifth note is the G. So 1, 3, 5, that's how to make the major chord, and it looks like this, as you probably know already, or you can also play it over here. And you can find this, the first note is then C, the third note is an E as you can see, and the fifth note is a G. And you can also find those notes in the chord when you play it. So this is the C, this is the G, a C again, you yeah, sometimes have double notes, that's totally fine. A E again, and a G. So, and also it works the same way with this chord. You can also find those three specific notes in this chord. So when you, for example, and this is how it works for every scale. So when you want to play, want to know which notes a G major chord consists of, you pick the first, the third, and the fifth note of the G major scale, which is a, a G, a B, and a D. Like that. And that's how it works. And then you might now wonder what a C major 7 is, for example, since, of course, those names mean something. And it's really simple, actually, because... You now understand this numbering system, I hope. And the C major 7 really means play C major chord. So, as this is, as you know, C, E, G. And add the 7th note of the major scale to it. Which is a B, as you can see. You can just count from C. And the 7th note is a B. So then you have this chord. You have the B here. So you also add the 7th note to it. So that's what these things behind the chords a lot of times mean. So this major 7 or major 9 a lot of times has something to do with the 7th note of the scale or the 9th note. But I will get more into that later. Anyways, there's a C major 7 chord. A very dreamy chord. And of course this is a D major 7. You can just use this concept all over your guitar. So that's how, to, how the C major 7 works. But you also have a C7 which sounds like this, a very bluesy chord. And a C7 is different from the C major 7, uh, because a C major 7 just picks out the 7th note of the scale, but a C7 or C dominant 7 picks out a flattened 7th note uh, from the major scale. So that's a B flat. Because when you want to play the C7, you pick out first the 7th note of the scale, and then you go down half a step from there. So it's a flattened 7th. So normally the 7th note is a B, but then you go down half a step, which makes it a B flat, which gives it this bluesy feeling. 
So C major 7 brings out the 7th note of the scale, of the major scale, and the C7 or C dominant 7 brings out a flattened 7th note of the scale. Which So that's how it works for every scale, not only for C but also for G and all those. So then we also of course have the minor chord. And as I said before, the minor, when you want to know which notes a minor chord contains, you also use the major scale to figure that out. Uh, it also, the minor chord also picks out the first, third and the fifth note, but it doesn't really pick the third, it picks out the flattened third. So instead of 1, 3, 5, it's 1, flattened, third, 5. Uh, which means that you can really pick the third note and then go down half a step. So that makes it, in this case of C major, it makes an E flat. Like that. And the minor sounds, of course, a bit more sad than the major. So minor one flat and third five. In th in this case, it's C E flat, G. C minor seven or a minor seven chord. It, as I, again, it works for every scale the same. So when you want to play D minor chord, you pick at the first, the flat and third, and the five from the D minor scale. It works like that always. So the minor seven. Again, as the name says, minor, so you pick up the first, the flat and third and the fifth, and you also add the flat and seventh to it, which is this chord. You can also play it over here. It's a very dreamy chord. So that's how the C minor seven is made, really. Then the C minor six, as you might have guessed, because you understand the numbering system probably a bit, uses a 1 flat and third 5 and the 6 so just the 6 of the major scale and a lot of times the C minor 6 is played like this Summersault uses that chord a lot of times very jazzy chord so you have the C minor 6 and as you can see this chord contains a C which is the first note the A which is the sixth note the E flat, which is the flat and third, and the G, which is the five, fifth note, like that. Then you also have the minor seven with a diminished five, diminished fifth, which is a chord that's used a lot by uh, King Cruel and also the Rex Orange County and also Peach Pit, for example. Like that. Now you might probably already guess which notes are in there. It's a C minor seven with a diminished five, so it's a C minor seven with a flattened five, really. So a one, a flattened third, a flattened five, which is a diminished five, and a flattened seven as usual with the C minor seven. So that's how it works, and that's how a lot of these chords work, really. So as you might know, indie jazz uses a lot of different jazzy chords and I can't explain them all to you because there's not that much time for but uh, you also have chords like the minor 9 and the 9 and the major 9 I will also explain those to you because I think those are quite important as well and the major 9 might sound a bit weird because I just told you that a scale consists of 7 notes and now I'm talking about the ninth one which is weird but it isn't uh, what it really means is that it, the, uh, you're really counting further so you go from C, D, E, F, G, A, B, seven notes, then C again, which is eight, then nine again is the D. So nine is really the same as the second, but there's a reason we say nine, I will get into that, but that's how it works. So when you go, when you see numbers higher than eight, you just have to count, count further. So you can see the eight as the C again, and then uh, D is nine, E is, uh, e is 10, etc. And that works for every scale like that. So with the D, it's uh, the D9, the ninth note of the D major scale, for example, is an E, because you're counting really from the D when you're at 8. So 9 and 2 are really the same. I hope that's clear. Think about it. Yeah, I think it's clear. Okay, anyways, when we're playing a C major 9, for example, a major 9, I'm using, again, I'm using C, but you can use it for everything. Um, a C major 9, which sounds like this. Almost even more dreamy than the major 7. C major 9 basically means play a C major 7. So use those notes, 1, 3, 5, 7. And add the 9th to it, which is the 2nd really. So that's a D. A C major 9, very nice chord. 
So that's how the C major 9 chord. And a lot of times when you're going higher from the to 9 and 13, a lot of times you keep the 7th in it. So with the C major 7, you keep the 7th note, the B in it. And when we look at this chord, the C major 9, you can see that there's a C, A, and you can hear that there's a C, A, E, A, B, and a um, D. But maybe you're now thinking, wait, there's no G in what you're doing. And that's totally fine. Sometimes these chords just leave out a certain note. So C major 9, sometimes a guitarist will not play the fifth note of that chord. That's totally fine. You can really imply that there's a fifth note, but you're not playing it. So you get that? So you can play C major 9 without really playing the fifth note. Uh, because it still sounds like a C major 9. Nobody's really missing the fifth one. <laughs> no offense against the fifth note, but that's just how it works sometimes. So that's a C major 9. Now a C9, so a C9, not a C major 9, but a C9 or a D9 or etc. uses a flattened 7 and adds the 9th note to it. So instead of, and it sounds like this. So instead of using the flattened, instead of using normal 7th note, it, it keeps that flattened 7 into it. So it's really playing a C7 and adding the 9th note to it, C, C9. Yeah, and the 9th note again is a D in this case. That's a C9. Now with the C minor 9, it's really all about... Uh, it sounds like this. Now with the C minor 9, you uh, you play C minor 7 really and add the 9th note to it. So the C minor 9 keeps the notes of the C minor 7 into it. The C major 9 keeps the note of the C major 7 into it. And the C9 keeps note of the C7 in it. And it's a bit much information, but it's all about understanding the concept. And what I really recommend you to do is to play a chord and then look at which notes you're playing so you can know which notes are in it and you can act cool uh, when somebody asks you what you're playing. And that's not really the reason. The reason why I'm teaching you all this and why I think it's so important to know this is because when you know which notes a chord consists of, for example, the C major 9, now you know that it consists of a C, a E, a G, and a D, and a B. When you know that, you can use that information to create a solo, to create a second melody. I think Make the Marco, for example, uses this idea a lot. Because the thing is, when I'm playing a C major 7, a C9, and I have a kind friend or a second guitarist, I can have him play certain notes from the C major 9 because that sounds nice and he can also use this, you play a solo where he ends on a note that's played in that chord because that sounds nice and also what I can even do is I can play a C major 7 and the, the, the keyboardist or the other guitarist can play a D to make a C major 9 chord with the two of us so that's so cool about it if you know which notes a chord consists of you can use that to, to create a chord together and to also make a solo easier as I said. So of course you can't always with every chord write out the scale and then figure out which notes are in there. You can also do it the other way around so you know how to play C major 7 at a certain point when doing it a lot of times or a D major 7. Then you can just look at which notes you're playing and then figure out in that way which is the seventh. At least that, that might be a bit easier sometimes. Also uh, I showed you just a side note I showed you how to play, mostly how to play these sevens and minor sevens over here, but of course there's lots of voicings. You can also play a C major seven over here and a D E minor a E minor seven over here and over here. Of course there are lots of voicings, but uh, yeah, I think to learn those different voicings, just watch, just play a lot of chords, play, just look at some songs that I did, and then be like, oh hey, that's a cool way to play a E minor 7 or something like that. That's really, I think, everything I wanted to say. I, Of course, there's lots of information about chords, but I hope I was able to introduce you a bit to the whole system and to make you get, go creative with this information. It's a lot to take in, don't worry about it. Definitely when you're playing, you'll figure out more and more stuff. If you want me to talk a bit about how you can create a chord progression using these chords or um, some more weird ones like a C13 and all that. If you want me to dig deeper into that, 
definitely definitely let me know if you don't want that that's totally fine as well i will just make a guitar lesson on a uh, song anyways coming tuesday but maybe for the weeks after that definitely let me know thank you so much for watching and i also want to give a huge thank you to frank for his donation to my paypal thank you so much for your support in this way and i hope to see you all the next time oh and also check out my instagram uh, you can sometimes vote over there which song you would like me to do next and also check out my Amazon shop if you want to know which stuff I use. All the links are in the description. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you the next time.